are certain standard corners of the Beethoven concertos that, that you, you, you talk about, but really it's, it's when you start to play um, that this thing, that the whole thing takes wing. Um, and f for me, it, it's been such a, a natural way to, to make music. I mean, it, it's just it's just been about uh, about listening, uh, sort of listening to each other, kind of a, a, an understanding that that doesn't always require a lot of, of a lot of talking. You you work and you, you you listen to each other, and and that's when it really blossoms. And it really has been a privilege for me to work with with Yuji and the naturalness with which the whole project seems to have unfolded. Um, is, is just just wonderful. <laughs> So I try and do, again, sort of four bars from the bottom. Beethoven mm concerto, -hmm. it's really, it's really always tricky. Yeah, I believe. Really, this, it, it, this, it, it, this it, and it, number three. It, yeah. and, it's and, not impossible uh, to have a favorite concerto. You feel differently, you know, you have a slightly different relationship with each of these works because they, they are so different from each other, so that's, that's inevitable. My heart is beating very, uh, uh, very much for for number three, and uh, but f uh, probably the the, the uh, some moments uh, ending and and the transition from ending from the second movement and transition to the third movement from number four it's something which really is very rare in the literature and uh, uh, especially in the concertant literature and uh, this is this is really wonderful wonderful concerto. I've always had a, a, a soft spot for the fourth concerto because of its very particular challenges. I mean, pianistically, there are there are many endless challenges, but also in terms of the the sort of the fragility of, of of the way it is when you when you play with with an orchestra. You know, it can be you, you're you're dealing with very minute um, degrees. Of sort of changes of tempo, changes of pulse and temperature here and there, and, and balance, and that it's it's always a, a great challenge, and and that's partly sort of what what draws me to the fourth concerto, and and it's also the most unusual in its in its layout, in in its structure. The, the tension in this music that, that really carries it through, carries the, the interest through, it, it's, it's all in the music, it's all there. Beethoven provided it. You, you just have to not get in the way of it. <laughs> and I think if you, if you start to, 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 to add kind of theatrical effects to try and make it more impressive or, or, or whatever, um, you just end up getting in the way of it. I mean, you, you just have to really understand that, that it, it, it's all there in front of you. It's difficult. It's difficult to, to, to bring it out. You have to bring it out in the right way and in the right context. But this, you know, the, this, this also is a challenge. It's, it's just trying not to be an impediment to what actually 
is, is already there in front of you. <laughs> I would like to avoid any superficial effects which in some moments could sneak in. For instance, I can imagine that the, the emperor could sound very, uh, very uh, robust or, uh, or, or almost aggressive, but this was not really the danger in our case. There's a temptation sometimes to be lured down certain paths by the common stereotypes of Beethoven. I think, as, as Yishi just said, you know, there's, a <clears throat> there's always the possibility for the Emperor Concerto to sound very bombastic and, you know, for that sort of heroic side of it to be exaggerated. Of course, it's, it's there, it has to be there, but it's by no means the, the, the full picture. Um, that, to me, is one of the things that's very tricky about Beethoven because, you know, we, we see this extremely robust character, this sort of outspoken, almost belligerent character of this, this composer. And, um, you know, sometimes the, the, the music, we might imagine that the music always follows that, that stereotype. It, it, it doesn't really, you know, the music is much bigger than that, as I'm sure Beethoven was himself. You know, the character was far more wide ranging than that. That's, that's one of the, the big challenges, I think, in playing his music. I played Beethoven's Cadenzas in the first concerto, in the C major. I, I play the bigger cadenza, the, the one that he wrote later on. Um, it, I think, adds a different dimension to the piece, really, and tells us something quite valuable about Beethoven's character. This is an extremely eccentric um, four minutes or so. Uh, takes us away a little bit from, from the style of the, the rest of the piece but really adds something very valuable to, to, to the piece as a, as a whole. Um, the, the, he wrote a cadenza for the second concerto also, which is, which is much later and again stylistically different, slightly different in, in the language compared to the rest of the piece. The third concerto, y you absolutely can't avoid playing his cadenza. For, for the first time, he actually writes it out continuously in the score and even makes the, the, the sort of the main climax of the movement is towards the end of the cadenza. Um, interestingly, you know, the development section in the first movement of the, of the C minor is, is, is relatively soft for most, in fact, almost all of the time it's, it's quite soft. Um, there's no real sort of peak in, in the middle of the movement. And I think, you know, in that sense, he's, he's laying down the law here and saying that you know the cadenza is no longer uh, for the improvise improvisation or for the, the the whim of the performer. You know this this is something that's integral to the structure of the movement. So so y you have to play what what he writes here for the fourth concerto. He provided two cadenzas. I play the slightly the the, the longer one, and in the fifth, of course, there's um, no cadenza.
I am really enormously uh, touched with the fact that, uh, that Paul is not only a perfect uh, instrumentalist, which his ability to, uh, to let the piece uh, grow within the within the time within the work on it it's uh, he is uh, he is coming with the with with the perfect version already and during the studio work it uh, by the repetitions the the piece is uh, is uh, is blossoming <laughs>